Mirror, mirror, show him to me. Show me Lawbringer's rework. It has been two years since Lawbringer last got reworked. And I say this lightly because his rework really didn't do anything for him. They gave him a few small adjustments here and there, enhanced light, far RMS top like hyper armor on his shove. But with each passing balance patch, Lawbringer just kept getting chipped away, nerf by nerf. And I can confidently say that Lawbringer is one of the oldest relics that we have in For Honor. Because all you gotta do is just parry the world. Is that so hard to ask? Is that so hard to do? Just, man. But like I said, this is the life of a Lawbringer player. Nothing but pain. The small amount of satisfaction that you get by playing this hero is not worth the pain you endure. Some days, I can just parry almost everything that's thrown at me, and I make the perfect reads in an unreactable game. But then, there are others. There are other days. There are days where I wish this game did not exist, and I wish it never came to me. I wish For Honor had never come to me. I wish none of this had ever happened. Just make a read, you little twat. Every time you hear Ad Mortem, you know somebody's getting pommeled. I want you guys to close your eyes, alright, and try to imagine something. Let your mind go blank so you truly understand these feelings. Imagine you're a heavily armored knight with plate armor stacked up to the bones. No vital area left unchecked. Six foot five, tall, dog, and handsome. Your favorite weapon of choice? Halberd, capable of piercing through heavy plate armor and being one of the most versatile weapons in medieval history. Now imagine this, if you will. Controller on the ground, broken. TV screen, shattered. Getting a GGE's message from a Rep 70 Orochi main. Spamming good fight three times in a row just to congratulate the Rep 70 Roji player for being so good at the game. And then seeing a half-naked man swing his axe around recklessly with hyper armor with no care in the world just because he has unlimited stamina and hyper armor. It feels as if you should just toss aside all your plate metal and run around naked like one of those Dark Souls invaders with the club that has over 5,000 hours in the game. Because I can guarantee you one thing, those guys have more poise than you do. Poise doesn't exist for you. Now I know a lot of people actually argue that hyper armor isn't needed and it's a lazy mechanic and in some ways I do agree with you. But given the fact that so many heroes are receiving hyper armor these days, it just kind of makes sense to give Lawbringer one since he is of course the old argument. He's wearing full plate armor, he might as well be invulnerable to some attacks, at least his second chain heavy, or maybe even his unblockable chain finisher, who knows? So many heroes are getting full blocks that cost no stamina, mind you, while you're holding it down like Kyoshin. They're getting very fast openers, crushing counters. Let's not forget about iframes for days. Unlimited stamina, and that means unlimited offense. And incredibly easy to use ganking tools, so you don't have to use your brain at all. We might as well just give Lawbringer this small, itty bitty thing. The funny thing is, is that the only other knight that has hyper armor in this game is born monger and she stole warden's kit when she was first released i think a lot of the warden mains are very upset because now <laughs> she is the one that has the heavy into light chain and three hit chain really a three hit string that's really fun to play compared to warden even though warden got his unblockable mix up which is honestly makes him really strong but his side lights though his silly side light i feel like i'm using like a wet noodle whenever i miss a side light and it's always an easy parry for my opponent and that's just free 24 damage or 27 damage to my face and don't even get me started about warden's zone stamina consumption that is just a joke now i only bring up Warden Warmonger because these two characters are identical when it comes to the fundamentals. She is practically Warden's lost sister and shares, quite frankly, half of Warden's animations. Now take a look at Griffin. Man's literally taken everything from Lawbringer. This is supposed to be the potential of Lawbringer's rework, but instead, Lawbringer gets left out to dry. New heroes take old heroes' movesets and make them better. Now I'm not saying we give Lawbringer undodgeables, 
but I am saying we make him a more fun hero to play against the new roster while keeping him fairly balanced. He just exudes old fashioned Frogger, which was so fun back in the day. Even with all of its problems, it was still an enjoyable experience. So if you managed to make it this far into the video, what other reasons keep Lawbringers in this toxic relationship? You know, he's actually not that bad with chain pressure because his unblockable comes out faster than me when I make a thumbnail. This, in my opinion, is one of his best redeeming qualities. Sure, there are other heroes with better chain pressure and, you know, more unblockables here and there, but beggars can't be choosers. His second trait that doesn't make me want to jump off a cliff is his parry punishes. Not only can he stun them with the follow-up light, the next light is basically guaranteed since they are blinded, allowing you to get into your unblock on mix-up incredibly fast. But I'm not done yet. And most Lawbringer mains tend to identify as a train in 2022. And I would say 90% of the time, you will find those sweet, juicy walls to run into, netting you at least a top heavy attack that deals tons of stamina damage and a blinding effect, leading you to pretty much guarantee a side light or shove to get into your unblockable mix-up, and as I said before, that unblockable mix-up is incredibly good. Now, I would like to mention Longarm, as it can be used quite well for a ganking tool, but there are just so many crazy ganking tools available these, these days, and it's just obsolete in so many ways. Sure, sure, it's fun using it in a 1v1 setting, a dual setting, because the animation is just hilarious and awesome, but it's impractical because it's outdated. I mean, just look at how much ganking tools we have these days. Glaiers, easy toe stab gank, Kyoshin's Kaze stance that locks you in for like three seconds, Raider Stampede's charge, they made that faster, Armish just ring the bell, Shinobi's kick, and sickle range, Shigoki hug, and so much more. Needless to say, if you're playing for fun, long arm is for you. And that's really the end of Lawbringer's kit. If your opponent doesn't parry your second heavy attack, well then great, you get into your mix-up and you get to play the game, fantastic. If you manage to get a parry on a lighter heavy attack, well great, you can actually start your mix-up and play the game. And I suppose there's the shove, what more can I say? The only time you're gonna hit someone is if they're drunk, high, or their monitor is turned off. Now look at this, read it and weep, this is my favorite setup on Lawbring right now. This silver divine halberd. Look at that. It's clean. I love this halberd because it reminds me of Lubu from Dynasty Warriors and how clean the Chimera set is for my Lawbring. And I really like this style of helmet as well. This is just one of my favorite builds so far. Let's just look at it real quick here so you guys can check it out. It's going to be the Gamble helm. Looks really sick. I like adding the little engravings there on the helmet, it looks way better in my opinion. This is the Chimera one, you can get this anytime you want. The Angelette Arms, awesome, God, it's just beautiful stuff. And I chose the, the Beleth Minera Axe. There is one with a bunch of engravings, but I wanted to keep this one a little bit simple and clean, because like I said, Kiss, keep it simple, stupid. And then the Winged Hound Shaft, this one has a little bit of wood, small engravings and gold pieces, wasn't too crazy. And then we've got the Wyverndale Baron Spike. I like this. It's got the dragon, it's got the eye. What more is there to dislike? It could go well with the Minerva, Minerva Spike right here, but I'm really just liking how the dragon is right there. It's just beautiful. This is just a beautiful set. I cannot recommend this enough. And it has a little lightning there because I just like the lightning too. It's simple, it's very small. I don't like to keep too many colors on my knights because as you guys can see all my knight heroes they're very simple and clean um except for black prior well black prior is like a bunch of yellow crap on him look at that that's just hilarious that's just a mustard meme uh, but my warmonger i try to keep it as simple as clean as possible it's just the horko set she looks amazing but when it comes to warden a warden is just a meme now so i just go all pink anyways and this just cracks me up honestly but yeah this is my dominion set i have the engravings on this halberd it looks a lot better we got the Chimera set going for us as well. And most importantly, guys, for Lawbring, you want to be running Last Stand, Bastion, and Ventral Barrier. With all those perks, you're going to be a tank, but you're eventually going to die, but still you're going to be a tank, and it's the best feats for this character. But now the question arises, how do we fix Lawbringer so that he becomes viable, but still fun, and keeps a core identity to him? when it comes to having viable offense, and not just turning him into the S-tier pick that all the comp players want to use in Dominion series, okay? So let's just think long and hard about this. Obviously, there's tons of good ideas out there, and for the Lawbringer rework, I really want to keep it really, really simple. Kiss, baby. Keep it simple, stupid. We don't want to create another monster like Shinobi or Jane June with Power Creep. 
Need I say more? All I see is unblockables. The most important thing that we need to change is his strings. He needs a light, light, heavy combo and a light, light, light combo. Having limited strings can make a hero feel more dull than they need to be. We just need more freedom when it comes to throwing out heavies and lights. It just makes you feel good. We get to press buttons and it's not too strong. Second thing that I would make him more viable is actually making his forward bash faster exactly like Griffin. Sure, sure, they'll have the exact same bash mix-up, but Ubisoft has already, you know, they've already cucked us that way. They've already copy and pasted everyone's moveset on pretty much every single new hero. The new pirate hero has like six or seven of the hero's movesets. It's an abomination, I'll tell you that much. He can keep his side dodge bash, but I would honestly increase the recovery slightly and bring it in line with the other heroes with dodge bashes because it's it's a really good recovery tool and that negates a ton of punishes, exactly like Shigoki's mix-ups. And I think Shigoki's headbutt is actually really good too for uh, negating damages and still being a really good recovery tool. Now the third thing we can do is add hyper armor on either his second chain heavy or his finisher heavy. I'm more inclined to add it to his second heavy as his third heavy is incredibly fast and it already has a ton of uses already, but that's up to you guys. I don't know, what do you guys think about that? I don't think it's too overpowered as many heroes are already getting hyper armor already and I just don't think Ubisoft is going to remove hyper armor anytime soon. For goodness sake, it's a fully plated knight, man. Give him something to work with. Just just give, give him a little something. The next thing I would like to change is obviously giving him a roll catcher. Every single hero needs a roll catcher, no doubt in my mind. A forward dodge with his impale animation would be just fine. I'm sure Ubisoft can figure that out and make the animations look as atrocious as possible, but you know, we don't need it to be super crazy. Uh, I don't know if it needs to impale and wall splat, just do a, like 15 damage or 20 damage, whatever, just flat damage like that so we can catch roll dodgers because I cannot tell you how many times people have rolled away from me when I pop revenge. It's just too saddening. It's, it's too much pain, man. I don't want you guys to go through this. And the last thing I want to adjust is his long arm. This one's going to be a little bit hard, but I personally don't want this move to be a fast ganking tool like every other hero that comes out. Kaze stance, gladiator's toe stab, uh, Sh shinobi's kick, and sickle rain. I want it to have its uses, but I also don't want it to be very oppressive. I want it to still be very fun and also meme at the same time, just so we can keep some identity and keep the core foundations of For Honor intact. Make it a little bit faster with better recoveries and that would make me happy. I don't want this, like I said, to be overtuned. I still want him to be a skill-based character with a high skill curve and a low skill floor. We all know what happens when you let a character run rampant without needing a brain. I don't see any Roji players anymore, which is hilarious, and I see Raider, Raider players as far as the eye can see. That goes for Jane June too, because when I play in Jane June a Raider, I don't really think, and I do incredibly well with them, simply because they have unblockable for days, infinite stamina, far-reaching hitboxes with their side heavies, and just unblockable indicator with infinite stamina. There's just there's no stopping these heroes. There's a reason why Jane June and Raider are S tiers right now. It's simply because. They have unblockables, they have low stamina consumption, they are one of the best at team fighters, and their hitboxes are ginormous. Oh, did I mention that they also have hyper armor and really high damage punishes? Yeah. Now Lawbringer has this issue too, his punishes are way too high, I really think they should tone it down. Either don't let him get two top heavies when they throw him to the side, unless there's like a really close wall of certain scenarios with uh, certain heroes, but he should only be able to get a light into a heavy just like every other single hero unless they really want to keep it that way because Jane June also gets two top heavies and so does Raider so if they want to keep it that way then Lawbringer was going to become well a really strong hero when it comes to punishes he always was and he always and he always will be too unless they decide to get rid of the impale move which I feel like that would be hilarious. And so I think I've suffered enough playing Lawbringer for the past couple of days. It's been quite, quite a journey. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you, I've had a lot of good games this past couple of days, but I also remember some incredibly, incredibly terrible times too. So there is a little bit of pain and satisfaction, but more pain than satisfaction. I said it before and I'll say it again. The small amount of satisfaction you get from playing this hero, it's not worth the pain that it's caused you. What do you guys think about 
what do you guys think about Lawbringer right now? Do you guys still enjoy playing him? Do you feel like he's the last relic of For Honor? I know a lot of people are going to say Warlord too, but at least Warlord has been viable for a really long time. He still has a good opener, crushing counters, he's got hyper arm, he's got a full block, he's got a utility within that, he's got crashing charge that we used to, but he still has really good wall throw punishes that take away half your stamina when you land a wall throw. He's got way more utility than Lawbringer would ever would. And he's a good team fighter too at the same time. So I feel like Lawbringer is the oldest hero that needs tweaks as soon as possible. Next to, you know, of course, uh, Nusha, Shaolin, Jormungandr, and a bunch of other heroes too. What do you guys think of the rework ideas? I wanted to keep it very simple. And if you guys have better ideas, more intricate ideas, let me know down below so I can read them. Because it's always fun to see what other Lawbringer mains really want for this hero. Because I know, I feel like a lot of Lawbringer players that really do enjoy the hero for what it is. They want to keep him basic and simple. Make him a, give him a little bit of few tweaks here and there. But still keep him as a light or heavy. Or someone that throws out attacks with their weapon instead of bashes as the main kit of this hero. We don't need someone that has charged bashes or someone that spams unblockables 24-7. We want a hero that we can throw lights and heavies out. This is what makes For Honor, For Honor. And I enjoy playing the heck out of this hero. I love going for parries with this character. He's just one of my favorite heroes, and I hope he gets tweaked soon. I'm pretty sure he's going to be in the testing grounds right after Conquer. But that is going to be it. Really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I love you guys. Thank you all for the support. I will see you guys in the next video. Let me know what other hero I should be doing and what other games I should be playing as well because I'll be doing more. I played this game because you don't have to. <laughs> so thank you. Bye bye. See you later.